So, I need to make some picture frames for my upcoming wedding. I'm gonna make them out of this walnut that I have here. I'm making a bunch of five by seven picture frames and some eight and a half by 11s. I made this miter sled for my table saw from Steve Ramsey's plans. I'll put a link in the description below. And I'm hoping to batch out a bunch of these picture frames today and uh, just get this done because I've got a lot of other things to build for the wedding. is cut rip to width. I've got them planed. The edges are nice and jointed. Now I'm going to try to use this miter sled to cut the sides of the picture frames. stop block situation. The idea is that you make your first cut with no stop block on the side and then you go back and forth with a stop block set at a certain length on this side and set at a certain length on this side. The exact length doesn't matter. What matters is that you're consistent. And I don't care exactly how long this is. What matters is that this is exactly the same as this. So that's why you have a stop block. Uh, after each cut, I'm marking whether I was this was cut on the right side of the jig or the left side of the jig with an R or an L. And that way, when I assemble the frame, I can match up every R with an L. And even if this angle is, say, 44, and this one is 46, because maybe I built my jig wrong, I'm guaranteed if I match up a, a right with a left to have exactly 90 here. But I cut out seven picture frames in just a couple of minutes. They're all perfect. I have them numbered. I have the corners labeled right and left. So this cut's a little tricky. To make it a little safer, I'm gonna use a riving knife and a ripper. And I have my fence set to just shave off a little bit from the side of each piece. The height of the blade is about an inch, and these things are an inch and a quarter, so it's gonna leave a nice little inset that I think is gonna look pretty nice in the picture frames. The next step is to cut uh, a small rabbit along these edges so that the backing of the frame can sit in and lie flush with the back. Uh, in terms of the actual hardware, I just bought this, these backings on Amazon and this plexiglass, which I'm, I'm hoping is clear. Yeah, it's just got a covering on it, so it's clear. That's good. So this is my impromptu router table. I set the, the depth of this router bit above the table, approximately equal to the thickness of the hardware, and I've set the distance out to be approximately the width of the, the rabbit that I want. So let's have a shot. So, just reassembled. Just to fit now. Ooh, perfect. It's got a little play, but whatever. It's a picture frame. Doesn't matter. Now, how about the depth? That looks pretty good. It'll be good to go to start gluing things together.
All right, it's day three. I've got all the frames cut and glued together. Uh, they're looking pretty good. The next step is going to be putting some splines in the corners with this spline jig. I have a video on how I made this jig, but the idea is that it sits on the table saw fence, the work piece goes in here, slides along the fence, and you cut one saw blade curve here, and you fill that with a thin piece of wood. I think I'm going to use maple because I think it'll look pretty good in contrast to the walnut. Uh, and then you just sand it down. It adds a lot of strength to the corners because just the miter joints with just glue uh, aren't the strongest. splines cut and I'm gonna fill them with this thin strip of maple that I ripped to be the same width as my saw curve which is about an eighth of an inch so it fits in pretty snugly and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna cut these out really quick on the bandsaw alright I'm gonna go ahead and glue these splines into place some of them are a little snug, so I'm going to persuade them. Alright, I'm going to use my disc sander to get rid of some of the excess maple that's sticking out on these splines. Uh, this tends to leave a lot of marks, so after that I'm going to sand by hand uh, to get rid of those marks with finer and finer grits. are done and they're sanded and now it's time for finishing. I've just hung the frames on some uh, protruding nails in my wall. So there's two reasons I'm going to use spray lacquer. The first is that I'm on a super tight deadline. I don't have time for multiple coats and this I can do a coat every 30 minutes and get a couple coats on there in one day. The other reason is that it is 115 degrees in my garage and I don't want to spend a lot of time on here. So let's do it. So, the frames have lacquer on them, and they're starting to look pretty good. But the trick with a lacquer finish is that it doesn't really feel that, feel that good until you buff it out. So all you need is a piece of paper and some elbow grease. Crumble up the paper and go crazy. going to pre-drill some holes for these tiny screws that hold on these pieces of hardware that support the backing of the picture frame. To determine where the holes are going to be, I made this sort of a story stick. So I line it up at the back and I have a marking for the short side of the frame and I have two markings for the long side of the frame. And the width of this stick is such that if I just line up the bit with the edge of it, the hole will be in just the right place for the hardware. I also have the depth stop of my drill press set to about the length of the screw, a little less, doesn't really matter. Just to make sure I don't go plowing through the, the whole frame and ruining the front. So let's drill some holes. Thanks for 
tuning in. I hope you enjoyed watching me make these walnut picture frames. I'm pretty happy with how they turned out. I made them for my wedding, but I don't actually have the photos yet that are gonna go in the frames at the wedding. So in the meantime, I just printed out some pictures of a, a few of my favorite people. Uh, there's a Ron Swanson picture, a Ron Swanson picture. Yeah, they're all Ron Swanson. He is my favorite person. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the if you like this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below and keep coming back for more videos in the future. Thanks.